In this lecture, we will talk about terrain modeling. At first, we will briefly introduce some definitions. Then we will recall the three-dimensional mapping technologies and we will introduce mathematical and digital terrain models. Specifically, we will talk about point clouds, tins, rasters, isolines and meshes, and finally, we will talk about how to process and analyze point clouds. So let's first set some definitions. At first, uh, let's define land surface or bare earth surface as an interface between solid earth and either atmosphere or man-made structures or a biosphere or vegetation. Then a more complex surface is terrain surface and this will be an interface between earth that includes also water surface, vegetation that means trees, bushes and also human-made structures and on the other side atmosphere. So it is a much more complex surface and essentially it is a bare earth surface with everything on it. Then we also have bathymetry, which is interface between solid earth surface and hydrosphere. That means it's an interface that describes the bottom surface of lakes, rivers and ocean. And we also often talk about seamless topobathy, which is a continual solid earth surface, which smoothly changes from bathymetry to bare earth surface. So we have already seen the pic this picture that essentially shows the difference between bare earth surface here and terrain surface that includes also vegetation and buildings. And it can include other structures as well. Then here we have examples of bathymetry. Here is a little mound that represents sand disposal, um, where the sand was dug from, the, uh, from this channel. And this is an area close to Cape Fear River, where the Cape Fear River enters the ocean. This is a very high resolution nearshore bathymetry measured by bathymetric LIDAR. And here are examples of seamless topobathy for North Carolina. And there are all kinds of challenging issues when creating this seamless top topobathy. And you can see an example here. Here the measurements um, of uh, bathymetry were done all the way into nearshore areas, but there are many places where the nearshore area doesn't have any points and is simply interpolated. So there is a gap in data in this area. And depending on interpolation that is used to fill this gap, the, you may get all kinds of artificial features. For example, here it is a little bit of a bump that, uh, uh, that uh, doesn't look like anything that is actually there. And here you can see how complex the um, bathymetry is near, um, near Cape Fear. Cape Fear is here. And this is Bald Head Island. So let's look now at mathematical terrain models. So the most common representation is by bivariate function. So that means that for each coordinate, for each x, y, there is only one value of z. This is important. And we can create a more complex representation keeping in mind the multi-scale character of terrain surface. And uh, you may remember the, the example from the uh, North Carolina shoreline uh, at different level of detail and the same properties we see also for surfaces. And that means that we can define the uh, terrain 
as a sum of several components where the first term is the smoothest component which describes the main terrain features and then we have additional components that include progressively more detail. Then we can also use statistical approach to uh, mathematical description of terrain and then this bivariate function will have the deterministic component which describes the main terrain features then random spatially correlated error and then noise. So let's look at, at an example of this multi-scale component. Here we have a profile along a dune, road and vegetated area. So if we take only this first term that describes the main features then we will get this kind of profile in the dune area this is the road with a little bump here and then these are the main features of the vegetated area now if we add this additional term we will be adding more detail and adding more detail doesn't change too much in this sandy area because there is nothing that has this additional detail so you can see it's very similar but in the vegetation vegetated area we have much richer structure so you can see that within let's say this hill we have several little features described when we add this additional term so now the question is whether this bivariate function representation is general enough. And as you can see from these two examples, one from natural topography, another from man-made structures, this bivariate function may not be enough for various features. For example, in this, uh, for this natural feature, we would actually have at least three points for this xy so there is one point on the ground another point here and another point here so we have three points for for each xy and here we have se similar situation even more complex so if we have terrain with this kind of properties then we need parametric representation and that means that each coordinate is represented by its own parametric function and this kind of representation is supported by different uh, three-dimensional design packages uh, such as k3d surf or cad and in gis you need a three-dimensional vector model for this kind of representation so now let's look at terrain mapping technologies. Uh, terrain mapping essentially means to sample continuous surface at discrete points. And it is important to distinguish how these discrete points are selected. With older technologies, the, these discrete points were selected by humans. That means that people who were surveying were picking up the important points in topography along valley lines, along ridges, along different structures. However, the modern mapping technologies use automated or semi-automated point sampling, such as LiDAR, real-time kinematic GPS. So the sampling is much denser but we are picking up everything that is on the on the surface so it is not selective so for example for land terrain mapping we have stereophotogrammetry uh, uh, where the points were again selected by the uh, person that were that was uh, doing the processing and these points are called mass points and break lines However, stereophotogrammetry is being very quickly replaced by LiDAR mapping. And LiDAR mapping leads to point cloud data 
that where the selection of points is fully automated. Interferometric synthetic aperture radar uh, usually produces rather complex data that are distributed already as raster. Then we have on-ground uh, 3D laser scanning. Uh, here we, uh, the result is point cloud, usually X, Y, Z, intensity, and also RGB, also the color channels for each point. And then real-time kinematic surveys uh, create point profiles where the sampling is automated along the profile. For bathymetry mapping, we, uh, the most common technologies are single and multi-beam uh, sonar. So here are some examples. Here is an example of real-time kinematic uh, uh, GPS. So again, you can see human selects the profiles, but the sampling along the profiles is automated, usually very dense. This, is, uh, this shows LiDAR. You can see that the LiDAR, different LiDAR technologies produce different patterns and use also different color of the LiDAR light. This is an older one, ATM2, that was used on the coast between 1996 and 2000. And this is on-ground laser scanner that is mounted on a robotic vehicle. Here is mapping technology for bathymetry. Uh, the, the sonar is usually mounted on a, on a boat, but it can be also mounted on a vehicle that can go from beach to near shore areas so that also the shallow areas can be, uh, can be measured. And now how the data would look like, what, what would be the uh, point pattern. So let's look at these different uh, different data sets and uh, let's see whether you can guess what kind of technologies were used for these different uh, uh, different surveys. And the, of course the years can be helpful as well. So here is the answer. The first is the the first pattern is just plain digitized contours from a topographic map. Uh, the, these two maps are from uh, photogrammetric data and these are contours derived from photogrammetric data and these are the original mass points that are used to derive these, uh, these contours. These are more modern technologies, easily recognizable LiDAR. You can see this is the LiDAR with the elliptic pattern, very dense points, and this is a newer type of LiDAR that just has these uh, parallel profiles, very, very dense sampling. And there are missing points here because these are already processed data, only showing the bare earth points, those points that have reached the bare ground. And this, uh, this sampling pattern is real-time kinematic GPS, so you can see that the points are very dense along the sampling path, but the profiles are rather far apart compared to, for example, LiDAR. And here we have another illustration of the LiDAR point density and how it has changed over the years. Uh, these are data from 1998. So you can see there are already quite a few points describing this building. And this was a uh, data point density about one point per three, uh, three meters. And these are the data from 2004 with uh, multiple overflights. These are the densest data that I have uh, worked with. So there is 15 points for two meter, uh, two meter grid cell. And this is achieved by flying two or three times over the same, over the same area and also using new, uh, newer technology than what was used in 1998. And essentially these newest LiDARs have about 10 times as many points with the point density about one point per uh, 30 centimeters. Uh, here is an example of 
pattern of data points for bathymetry and for beach mapping using single beam sonar and real-time kinematic GPS. So you can see here the blue lines are single beam sonar and the red lines are real-time kinematic GPS on beaches. And these data are for uh, a new inlet that opened after Hurricane Isabel in 2003 on Hatteras Island. You can see the air photo before and after the hurricane. And this area was actually filled. And it, it has a very, very thin, a narrow dune and road passing through it and it needs to be uh, heavily maintained to keep it in, to keep it in place. But but the important thing to to show here is the pattern that is used for uh, for the single beam uh, sonar and real time kinematic GPS. And here is the result uh, of the Hatteras breach, and you can see that it was very very deep very quickly. Within few days, it was very deep. Within uh, over well over ten feet. So in the next section, we will talk about digital terrain representations.